Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested. And I'm Patrick from Tech Thing. And also of Tested here to review some products. I have a title here. Yeah. <laughs> Senior tech correspondent. Uh, Patrick Norton is here to talk about a laptop, real laptop that you've been using for quite a while and liking. I, yeah, I've been carrying, so I've been carrying a uh, Dell XPS 13, a 2013 model for a couple of years now. I am horrible on laptops. I'm not particularly, I don't fling them downstairs. I don't use them to like, you know, pound tent pegs in or something like that. But I use them constantly there in my house. I use them in my car, I use them at work, I use them outdoors. Um, you know, my backpack typically weighs 30 pounds and the laptop shoved in there in its own compartment. But I gotta say, I've been incredibly happy with the build quality, the fit and finish, and the way it is held up over time. Yeah, last year Dell uh, kind of revamped their whole mm -hmm. XPS laptop line with XPS 15. Yeah. It has that kind of edge to edge. The infinity, infinity edge. Edge display, well, which looks really nice. A super thin bezel. They kick the screen all the way up to the top. Um, this one's available. It's interesting. Uh, in a 1080p and a, what they call a Quad HD or a 3200 by 1800 option. And what this is, is not just the 2015 version, but at the tail end of 2015, they added, uh, basically they dropped the Skylake processors into it. So this is running a Core i5-6200U processor. And it's the 13 inch version. Yes. So some people like that size more. It's a little more portable. 15's a little big. Uh, for some people, and this is like a, it looks like a great travel laptop. Yeah, I mean, it's like, you know, I want to say it's like a 13.3 inch screen, which kind of crazy is the the way they've engineered this is the whole thing is like 11.9 inches wide, 7.98 inches or something ridiculous like that uh, deep, or 7.88 inches deep. I'm going to crib off my notes here. It's nine millimeters at the front, 15 millimeters at the back. So it's basically like 0.6 inches thin. Um, I prefer, f for what I do, the majority of what I do, I prefer a 13 inch laptop. By 15 15 inches, I'm thinking I should just go back and use my desktop computer. That's right. Um, and when we say the inches, we're talking about just the display, the viewable right. display. And I think what Dell is trying to say here is that they've designed a line of laptops where even though the screen is 13.3 inches, the actual build, like this is about the size of like maybe a big 12 inch laptop. Yes, I mean, it's, it feels like it's smaller than a legal pad. And it's, it's incredibly compact. I mean, you're looking at um, 2.9 pounds for the touchscreen version, 2.7 pounds for the non-touchscreen version. So it's in the neighborhood of a lot of stuff we've seen that is actually a tablet with a detachable keyboard. Right, so there is no actual detachable screen no. or keyboard. It's not like the Surface Book <laughs> or the Surface Pro. It is a traditional <laughs> as traditional laptop with the yeah. guts on the inside. Now, the two configuration options are also interesting because on the high end, what you have here is mm -hmm. the 3200 resolution. Right, 3200 right. by, by 1800. 1800 resolution, which Windows 10 that works, you're going to run it as um, scaled up mm -hmm. at about 125%. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm typically running at 125%. Uh, I often find myself control zeroing, going back into 100% on, uh, on uh, web pages and stuff. It's been interesting because I've spent most of, I spent a big chunk of 2014 running with a 4K desktop monitor. Mm -hmm. And then in 2015, when I had to buy one myself, it was like a 2560 by 1440 WQHD monitor. And over the course of 2015, I became more and more frustrated with the 1080p desktop on my laptop versus the huge amount of pixelated real estate on my desktop oh my monitor. T 1080p on a laptop? That's something that Mac users can only dream of on a MacBook Air. Well, it's funny, right? But it's, it's, the, it's what the majority of laptops are doing. It's what the majority of desktop monitors yeah are doing these days, which is, by the way, if you're thinking about getting a larger, a higher resolution desktop monitor, get it. Get it, get the high yeah. resolution one. 2560 by 1440 is like the minimum I think yes. I would buy it today. But there is a 1080p model, and the 1080p model, which is cheaper, yes. several hundred dollars about cheaper. About $300 cheaper. It actually doesn't have the touchscreen. Which doesn't really bother me. Doesn't bother you, it would bother me. So you want the 1080p screen. And I want it with the touchscreen. And that's what's interesting. I suspect, I could be wrong, I suspect Dell's programming these out based on what people ask for. Yeah. Uh, and. You know, a lot of people don't use a touchscreen on their laptops or very, very rarely use it. Like I half the time, 90% of the time when I'm using the touchscreen on a laptop, I'm flicking up, you know, the opening screen to log in uh, or I'm doing casual browsing and, you know, using it to like scroll through some kind of huge article. Um, you, however, 
live la vida touch screen. I do. I, I use it to move, you know, move files around. Right. I use a notification slide in from the side. I actually use it to mm -hmm. sw swipe desktops. Uh, it works really well with Windows 10. Now, if you don't have a touch screen, you gotta rely on, of course, the keyboard or mouse. Which are um, fantastic. And so the keyboard you really like here? Yeah, it's like, I wanna say there's somewhere around like a 1.3 millimeter travel on the keys. I'm a touch typist. I can type like, like back in the day, I could type 80 words a minute on a Selectric typewriter. This is a really nice feel to it. Right up there, I'd say, with the Lenovo keyboards I've used. Um, Which are, I think, the high bar for PC absolutely. laptops. Uh, I would say this is, a little, uh, definitely better than, for example, the 12 inch mm -hmm. MacBook, the Apple release that yes. has almost zero travel right. on it. So but it's little, really thin. But it's really thin, <laughs> but it doesn't have as much travel as I would think a full chiclet keyboard. Right. It still feels a little bit thinner, but it's a good compromise. Mm -hmm. I mean, the other thing is kind of what me is, and, and this is also a frustration I have with phones right now, is so many manufacturers are obsessed with thin. Mm -hmm. It is kind of like, we used to see these laptops five or 10 years ago being imported from Japan that were like, it's five millimeters thin. It was unusable, yeah. but it was really thin. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's somewhere around, you know, 0.6 inches, 15, you know, that, that area. I think we're thin enough we're at thin this enough, point. Totally. Right. Um, what about the uh, the trackpad? I like it. It's a simple, basic glass pad and trackpad. You know, it handles multi-touch gestures. Um, you know, the biggest thing for me was realizing that if I spread my fingers, it would magnify. You know, the, the in Explore. Yeah, yeah. Or or Chrome actually, and that was right. the kind of thing I'd be like, sort of casually, you know, scrolling up and down. A finger would brush against it, and the the, the text would get huge. Um, once I got used to that. Everything was pretty clean and, and pretty simple. You know, the same stuff as we saw at the beginning of 2015, where it's like a CNC milled enclosure. You know, the the palm rest is mm -hmm. their their carbon fiber kind of thing, and that's part of why it's so yeah. It, you know, because it's for, it's the aesthetic. Formula One intakes. Like. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, what's also improved, like you mentioned, is now there's Skylake processors mm -hmm. and performance. I think if you're going to go buy a laptop, buy for performance rather than thinness. Yes. Today. And Intel's latest generation of mobile uh, processors is out, and it's the Skylake generation. So, what's the difference between Skylake and Broadwell? Well, basically, the primary difference is it does a better, uh, uh, a much faster job of changing power states, and it has more granular control over um, the power states. You know, on the die itself. So I think somebody at Intel when they were announcing Skylake was like, you know, it's if you had an air conditioner and you could have it cool that person in that room, but not cool the rest of the room. Which, if you get the metaphor, instead of you know powering the whole chip, probably makes sense. And if you don't, you're probably staring. The, the other big deal um, is uh, the ability to do power state changes in a millisecond, which means. Yeah incredibly fast, you know, resumes and restarts and incredibly fast. So you get incredibly fast, incredibly granular control over what's powered on and on, on, the, on or off on the chipset. Um, the Intel uh, 500 graphics consume less power than previous. It's 4K ready. Mm. Um, mostly though, it's, you know, it's it's a die process. It's a tick, not a talk. So they right. went from 22 nanometer to 14 nanometer. That gives them some lower TDP uh, and gives them a little bit of a, a, a speed boost. Yeah, and what you have here is the Core i5 model. Mm -hmm. now, Intel has a whole, in the Sky like mobile line, it's a whole spectrum. You have on the low end, you have like the Core M four processors. Four and a half watt Core M right. parts. Core M3, <laughs> and 5, and 7. And then on the i side, there's Core i3, 5, and 7. Right. Now the difference between Core i5 and 7 on the laptops not as big as a difference no. on the desktops. There's still gonna be dual core mm -hmm. on both sides with four core type right. of threading. Uh, you're gonna get um, turbo. Mm -hmm. So like for something like this, I think starts at like a 2.3 gigahertz. And maxes out at 2.8 gigahertz. That's right. Um, on the i7 side, you get a little more cache. Right. And, and then both on the i5 and on i7 side, there are options for like the faster integrated graphics. You can tell us when you're looking at Intel, well, well, when you're looking at laptops period, because they kind of are all Intel laptops at this point, there's this sweet spot, which is like a core i5-ish, you know, two core, four thread, eight gigabytes of memory, and that's the vast majority of SKUs we're seeing from mm -hmm. everywhere. You can get a 16 gigabyte version of this if you dig deep enough in Dell's website after you choose a Core i7 part. You can find a Core i7 part that has four cores and eight threads if you're willing to find an obscure model from one of the, you know, sort of the, the gaming slash, you know, yeah. workstation end of the laptop lines. And that's a very niche case, because right. on this side, you know, you're not gonna get uh, discrete graphics mm -hmm. on here. If you want 
a i7 with 16 gigs of RAM, like right. you're gonna need that for a specific reason and mobile, right. like at some point you're gonna buy a desktop yeah. with that with that spec. Yeah, I mean if you're if you're working with like if you're a programmer that are working with giant spreadsheets, okay, I got it. If you're you know if you're doing video editing, you probably need a you discrete need multiple, GPU. Yeah, and you need multiple cores for all that threads, you know, to do that on desktop. You can do that stuff here. It's gonna yes. be functional. You know, it's not gonna do your high end everything, right. but it's good enough to, to, as a work computer. It was funny when I first, you know, I, I basically benchmarked this uh, using Handbrake, because Handbrake is kind mm -hmm. of a huge, it's a thing that takes up a large part of, of my day during stressful times, <laughs> right? I have to render the video and upload the video. And, and you know, when I when I built my, my Skylake, my 6700K system, you know, I went from like rendering at 20 frames per second to rendering at 100 frames per second. Mm -hmm. That is a full on like 90 watt desktop park. 95 watt, 90 watt desktop. It is a high power by current standards desktop part. With this, it was interesting because it was actually running a little bit slower than the 2013 model. And I was like, what the hell? This is not supposed to be happening. Um, I uploaded, uh, I, I updated the BIOS, the firmware for it, and that apparently they had a TDP cap in place. Ah. Um, so the firmware controls the TDP, which directly uh, impacts the performance of the chip because then it went from like 17 frames per second to 34 frames per second, which was all Almost, but not quite twice as fast as the 2013 model. That's something that people, when you're shopping for laptops, you should definitely keep an eye mm -hmm. out for because even though Intel can rate a TDP, right. you know, 7.5 watts in the low end and it'll clock up until so manufacturers of laptops will sometimes mm -hmm. artificially create their own curve <laughs> right. just for fan management, just to say that their, their laptops are going to be quieter. And I will say this was compared to the 2013, the, you know, the previous, you know, I want to say like a Broadwell processor, it was. You know, it, it it is significantly quieter, although I will say I also have flashed so locked down in so many things. Like even but even if I'm running all of the cores flat out on uh, on handbrake, I'm really not noticing too much going on. So that was a big plus on that one. All right, let's look at the ports here, because you had a ton of ports, obviously. Oh, goodness. You uh, got power here. Which is good, discreet. And, yeah. and I'm gonna laugh, because because in the wake of Apple, like, you know, one port for everything, reduced parts cost, it's great for the user. Um, I'm actually now officially excited anytime I see a discreet uh, power port on a device. I that's think that's sad. a plus. That's a sad state of things. Well. That we have to be happy to see that. You got power, you got USB -C. Well, you USB-C. Yes. Uh, you got USB, super speed USB, headphone, and Look at this, you got even a battery indicator. I love the fact that there's a battery level indicator on this. Um, it's also wow. one of the subtle things is there's a small white light on the front here, and as you started getting down somewhere between 20 and 10% of battery life, this turns orange instead of white. Oh, so you, you've got the ability to kind of keep on top of what's going on in terms of power consumption, or just being aware that you need to plug it in. So there's two USB 3.0 ports, one on this side, one on this side, and a micro SD card slot, or excuse me, uh, an SD card SD slot, so SD, SHC, SDXC. Um, Any of those uh, USB ports? Do you know if they charge as well when the laptop's closed? Yes, but you have to dig around in the BIOS to engage that if you want to turn that. So it's funny, um, or it's not funny at all, the DisplayPort adapter, which is $80. Uh, if you want HDMI that was out, be my guess. I'm so sorry. $80, <laughs> yeah. I was going to guess that was because you have a USB-C uh, port there, so you got to have an adapter. There's no you know, DisplayPort, no HDMI. That's an adapter, $80. Wow. Yes. Well, yeah, and I don't know what to say about that. HDMI, VGA, another USB 3.0 port, and yeah, Ethernet. Yeah. So it's a fairly complete adapter. Mm -hmm. um, I would like the little cable to be considerably longer, but hey, it snaps into the case, and that makes it smaller in your bag. I, it, whether you like it or not, you know, I don't know. It's like USB 3.1 Gen 2, Thunderbolt 3. Uh, it'll work with a DisplayPort adapter to go to DisplayPort app. USB-C is coming whether you like it or not in 2016. It is yeah. going to be all over the place and everywhere, and it is going to shove its way down into the least expensive models. But, you know, reducing parts count, um, you know, reducing the number of ports um, reduces the cost and makes everybody feel more super better because we've got Thunderbolt 3. You don't have anything to run on Thunderbolt 3, but we've got Thunderbolt 3. I just feel like USB-C, at least for 2016, is a big checkbox feature. Yeah. And if you need HDMI and you don't want to spend another 100 bucks for an adapter, excuse me, 80 bucks, um, you know, shop carefully. Yeah, maybe Dell in the future, like Razer, will sell an accessory for you to put a discrete GPU and run it over Thunderbolt.
It would be nice. Yeah, I, I don't think it's gonna happen, but I Dell, think maybe. Are... Maybe, maybe. Uh, what about battery life? Of course, battery life usually affects performance. 56 watt hour battery, a little bit bigger than the previous generation, like maybe two watt hours, nothing big deal, mm -hmm. not a big deal there. Um, what are you getting out of it from your use? I'm getting typically about eight hours. Okay. I have been told, I've not tested this myself, uh, but I've read and been told that the 1080p non touchscreen version, um, basically I think because there's so much less graphics processing going on is consuming or giving you about two hours more battery life. Wow. So that's like a 25% gain in battery life. Yeah, not bad at all. Save no. money and get big battery life if you don't need that resolution yeah. or touch screen. Um, anything that you found peculiar about using this? Any trade-offs in the design? Because there's always trade-offs, right? <laughs> you go like, you ask, you know, is it Dell? Just what are the trade-offs of getting this thin bezel? You know, why doesn't Lenovo and other, well, all the other companies do it? Is there bad antenna reception because they have to wire that around? You know, the, the wireless has been great. It's 802.11ac, um, I want to say two by two, uh, two, you know, 2.4, 5 gigahertz, um, Bluetooth 4.1. It's not multi-user MIMO, but then again, nobody has multi-user yep. MIMO uh, routers at this point. The really big compromise, I think, for a lot of people is if they put the web camera right there. And that drives a lot of people nuts. Yes, it would drive me nuts. Um, Especially, it's it's up no shots. Well, I, it's I don't know. Like everybody does no shots naturally, I think. Or if they don't do <laughs> no shots and do the Stanley Kubrick like Full Metal Jacket, uh, you know, staring at the screen while the while the webcam stares at their forehead, um, you know, I I put it on a box. Yeah. If it's bothering me that much, but then you you know either have to type like this or don't okay. type. Um, I don't. It's not a deal breaker for you. It's not a deal breaker for me because so much of what I do that involves needing to be filmed, I end up with you know a, a dedicated screen, camera. yeah, a dedicated camera set up in a place with lighting mm -hmm. and stuff. And if I'm actually using this, it's either because there's been an epic fail in the studio, or because I'm stuffed in an airplane seat or in an airport or in the front right. seat of my car. In which case, it's going to look awkward and, and peculiar anyway, no matter where that is located. But for a lot of people, they find that really really irritating. There's no HDMI, which I find kind of frustrating, but again. It's 2016. Um, people are eliminating ports left and right on laptops. So the so. configuration you've been testing, mm -hmm. uh, i5, 6200U processor, eight gigs of RAM. What's the storage like? Storage 256 storage? gigabytes. It's all. Is it uh, SATA based? I want to say it's. Uh, PCI Express, NVMe, but it's not. Okay. And I should probably double check that and memorize it. Um, but at this point, I think. Uh, uh, at this point, I'm just so thrilled to have 256 gigabytes on board <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> that, you know, because I've been running with a 128 gigabyte hard drive That's for the not last enough. year. Nope. No, uh, yeah. not when you're handling video. You know, when I'm generating like six gigabytes of video a yeah. week, 128 gigabyte drive. And spec at that with the Quad HD and touchscreen is a little over $1,500? Right about $1,500. Okay. You know, you can find a, the 16 gigabyte version, I want to say, uh, by Core i7, that, that starts to get pretty pricey. They have a $749 version, but it's a Core i3 with four gigabytes of RAM. Um, we saw this with uh, the, you know, the Microsoft Surface Pro and a lot of laptops uh, that came out. As, as the Skylake laptops started hitting in November, we noticed that a lot of people have a skew. It's like under $1,000, yeah. under $800. Don't buy a Core i3 laptop with four gigabytes that you can't add more right. RAM to. At that point, you're paying more for like the industrial design. Yes. And it really is only if you want just to browse the web and want something <laughs> pretty. But yeah. you can allocate that money better to get some extra performance that maybe it doesn't have the, the infinite bezel. I don't want to run any operating system with less than eight gigabytes of RAM. Yeah. Um, OS 10, Windows 10, Windows 7 at this point, like eight gigabytes is kind of the minimum I want to deal with on a daily basis. But you would recommend this laptop? I am in love with this laptop. I was in love with its predecessor, uh, and this has a, a much nicer screen. I mean, you know, the colors are saturated. I'm loving the higher resolution. The keyboard is fantastic. Uh, battery life's been solid. Thumbs up. Awesome. Well, thanks so much, Patrick. My pleasure. Uh, where can people find more of your reviews and your you know, the podcast? Well, here at Tested.com, or do me a favor, check out techthing.com, T-E-K-T-H-I-N-G.com. And if you're into home theater, check out A-V-E-X-C-E-L, A-V-E-X-C-E-L, uh, which is a podcast I do with Robert Heron. Awesome. Thanks so much for showing us the XPS 13. It's a good-looking laptop. I like it. And we'll have more on Tested.com. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, like our video, and we'll see you next time.